Good morning. This is Joe Geeson. I'm going to have a quick run through of my vinyl Molly Hatchet collection, who are Molly Hatchet formed Florida, early 70s. One of my favourite Southern rock bands took off from where Lynn Skinner had left off. And rumour has it the first album was even going to be produced by um, Molly Van Zandt, but that's had never happened. But this is their ponderous debut, classic um, Frank Fazetta cover. Bruce Crump drums, Banner Thomas bass, uh, Brain Rowland, um, Dave Hubeck and Steve Holland guitars and uh, wonderful singer Danny Joe Brown on vocals, um, gravelly whiskey soap voice. And this album came out in 78. And it's a wonderful album from classic, you know, Bounty Hunter, Gator Country. And there's a fantastic cover of the um, Allman Brothers Band, um, Dreams I'll Never See. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some, um, The Creeper is a wonderful track, very bluesy, very heavy, some classic slide guitar. Well, worth anyone's money. And this copy has a an inner sleeve as well. I'm taking out four, got the lyrics on it. Following year, um, this, I've still got the telephone on this one. The band's biggest hit single and record, Flirting with Disaster, and another thing that's to cover. Same lineup, title track is worth the money alone. You've also got Whiskey Man, Boogie No More, um, great cover of One Man's Pleasure. It's a um, solid album produced by Pat Armstrong. Um, again, an inner sleeve. So, well worth looking out for. And art, what doesn't get much better than this, does it really? You know? Okay. So then, sadly, Danny Joe Brown left the band. He was uh, having a bit of a, being a bit of a tail, uh, I believe. So, in comes new singer um, Jimmy Fowler, who was a much more solid, heavier, thicker, bluesy voice. And in 1980, we get Beaten Yachts. Another great album, not quite so sudden. It alienated a few fans. More kind of hard rock direction, this one, but still, great album. You can't argue with the title track, Pentos Pauper, Double Talker, even the Gentle Bambler. Great, some great stuff. And there's a promo of the album, which is in the States. This one, different cover. Get Ford Sleeve. And again, an inner sleeve on the main album. But the second album that comes with it is a promo six track live set. Um, there are bootlegs existing of the whole show. Uh, it was intended for a live album, never appeared. Um, the six bonus tracks have been issued on CD, but there's more available. So we'd love to see those. But those live tracks are absolutely stunning. 1981, we get. Techno Prisoners. Now, by then, they were no longer using Frank Vazetta's covers because he had, by all reports, got a bit self-important. He was claiming he basically made Molly Hatchet and um, pressed some stuff at the market. So the band got other covers, you know, in a similar style done. Again, Jimmy Fowler, um in a sleeve. And... Title track opens. There's a great duet on the Spectrum in the Morning with Baby Jean. Um, long to a Sally cover version, which is actually slower, heavier, and bluesier than the original. Again, it didn't sell too well as well at the time, but I really love this album. And then at the end of the tour, it was all changed as um, before the end of the tour, bassist Banner Thomas left, as did drummer Bruce Crump. In fact, Banner left first and Bruce Crumb wanted to leave. He stayed on for a bit longer in order to help the new bassist, um, new bassist settle in. And that was Riff West, who appears on this album, No Guts, No Glory, the first album with no um, no fancy artwork. But you've got a, a new bassist and Riff West and Barry um, or BB Borden on drums for the one album. It's probably 
less Southern rock. It's, it's a good yeah. album, but it does feature probably the band's best best individual track in for the Peacemakers. Uh, eight Minute Epic, really worth, you know, that money for that album alone, or that track alone. And then 1985 or 1984, the deed is done. And by this time, we'd lost a guitarist. Um, and we gained a keyboard player. And this features John Galvin on keyboards, two, two guitar, and again, nice in the sleeve. With this, so just confirming, we had, um, we still had Dave Fleabeck and Dwayne Rowland on um, on guitar uh, with a new lineup here. Management pressure, record label pressure, it's a very, very different album. It's still some great rock tracks, but it's very much more commercial, very differently. I mean, there's, uh, you know, Satisfied Man and Stone in the Heart are just, you know, great FM material. Not really Southern, but great list all the same. They turned it around again with this, though. Double Trouble Live, 1985. Well, in my view, one of the best live albums ever recorded. Features tracks from, you know, Danny Joe Brown's back in the band. Features tracks from across their career, including, you know, a couple of the Jimmy Farmer songs. Um, there's a great cover of Three Birds dedicated to Ronnie and saxophone, the saxophone on there's two new tracks edited down for the by the couple of tracks missing for the CD, but they were put on in a recent box set by Cherry Red. Um Xavier Russell and Kavang gave this 15 out of five. Uh, when a review starts, let's just pretend our means live after death doesn't exist, you know it's gonna be a, a good album. And again, one I'd recommend to anyone. And then a couple of years later, all changed again. As um Dave Fleabeck had left the band, and in came um Bobby Ingram. And this is probably the beginning of the end. It's again not a bad album, but it's just so commercial, quite popular in places. The record label were bringing in outside songwriters. Um, worth noting that Bobby Ingram and um, John Galvin were both formerly of Danny Joe Brown's solo band. Um, when he you know, was out of the band, he recorded one upon this album, one of the greatest Southern Rock albums of all time, in my view. Um, just check out. Um, well, there's lots of tracks about checking out on this, but actually they recorded one track from that album for the last set, going back to this, which is um, Edge of Sundown. Or again, Southern Rock Central Listening. The last final album I have here is The Greatest Hits. So 90 ish, 91, I think. Um, some couple of unreleased new tracks. It's a good, good, good set, expanded on CD. Um, now, the band are still going, but my interest stops there because they're currently going with no original members. Um, the music's good, okay. On his own, but it's not Molly Hatchet. A um, couple of extras here. I've got this Italian comp compilation, which also features Ted Nugent, Meatloaf, um, Track Ball 3. It's, you know, interesting set. And there's also this live set by the Charlie Tr Daniels Band, uh, which features Molly Hatchet on the track. It's, you know, great, you know. Bit of Americana, but uh, lots of rock and roll. Some good stuff there as well. And lastly, in my vinyl collection, I've got this promo sampler of Bloody Be of Techno Business, which features a few less tracks and they're all edited down, obviously designed for airplay. And then going back to 7980, you've got this promo of Crossroads, which is a track of a band used to pay live. Um, cover version of the um, Robert Johnson track, which is credited to Eric Clapton incorrectly, although Cream did, you know, do the arrangement everyone knows in the same way that Deep Purple arranged Hush, the version that everyone knows. Um, by far the best version of Crossroads you'll ever hear since I did a bonus track to the Fragment Disaster CD. Um, again, fantastic. So that is my Molly Hatchet vinyl collection thus far. 
um, all of it well worth checking out and some fantastic things as well. So enjoy. <laughs>